Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is John Jake Gaming on the mic here, coming at you with a brand new episode of the Memphis Dynasty here on NCAA 12, one of the under NCAA underrated NCAA games, in my opinion. And we are here with the Memphis Tigers. We are we're off to a great start. We were at three and one, and then we dropped our last couple of games. But we're trying to bounce back. We're back at home here at the Liberty Bowl Stadium. And we're taking on USF, which on paper may seem like a better squad. But in spite of that, Curb Hertrick is going to be rocking with us. USF is a B overall squad across the board. Whereas we're a C overall team with a C plus offense and a C minus defense that we have the ability to work with, right? So that being said, should be a fun episode. Try... Took an L last night, but we are about to bounce back here, man. So it should be a fun one. If you guys are excited for it as well, make sure you go ahead, smack that like button for me, as that helps me out that YouTube algorithm. And hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel. Let's go ahead and dive right into the action. I'll see you guys there. Alright boys, so we find ourselves back here in the Liberty Bowl Stadium. Let's see if we can make something shake here as we go ahead off, hand it off to Tooth Toofington for our first offensive play of the entire game. And hey, we're making some good things shake here early on. But we do have a third and long that we got to deal with right away though. As we got a third and seven now coming up as Bell is going to drop back the pass. He's going to look over in the middle of the field. He's going to find D'Angelo Bryden. For the first down. And that's a nice way to move the chains. Relying on that tight end to get the job done. You know he's an old-fashioned guy when he doesn't even wear any gloves. So now, first and ten coming up after that big first down grab. We'll see if we can continue to move the ball downfield. As we look over the middle of the field, we find IT Thomas. But IT Thomas cannot bring the ball back in. So now, second and ten coming up as Bell... Drops back again. we got plenty of time to work with, but makes a terrible read. Almost finds a way to get himself intercepted because of it. So very fortunate. Well, we still have the football in our hands right now. As now, we have a third and ten once again. As Bell looks around to the right-hand side. Looks, fires to Luke McConnell. And Luke McConnell is going to find the first down again. A steady drive for the Memphis Tigers. And something that we needed given we're on this two game losing streak right now. So we're trying to finish strong. We're trying to just find that mojo back. Must win game for us. And we can't miss a throw like that, man. We had the touchdown. We had him wide open in the end zone. Couldn't hit him, though. And now it's third and nine coming up as Bell is going to line up under shotgun. Looks to the right hand side. Tries to dump it off, but somehow misses the out route. How do you miss the dump off? I have absolutely no idea, but fourth down, we're going to be aggressive early. We're actually going to go for us. Fourth and nine. Bell draws back. We got a man open. Tooth Toofington all by himself in the end zone. Touchdown, Tigers. Let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's exactly what we needed. Tooth Toofington. Able to expose that defense in a big way. So now USF is going to go ahead and take back over. As USF will try to get things going here. Going to the left hand side. And we can't bring him down. This has been a problem during our two game losing streak. Just a bad tackling. Just I feel like... A lot of times that like the first guy that gets to a ball carrier can't bring him down. And that is a major issue that we are just having right now. Just not a good time at the moment. 
But that being said, we do have second and long coming up as we'll see this tailback once again get the carry. Nazir Evans was air, the true freshman, the four-star outside linebacker. He can't bring him down initially either. So it's a program line problem that we got going on on the defensive side of the ball. I don't know how we fix it either. That's the crazy part besides recruit better, I guess. But second and short coming up, they do get a short passing play out over to the left-hand side. And it's going to go for a first down. So now first and 10 coming up again. As it looks like it's going to be a play action. We do get some pressure, but tailback's all by himself, though. And it's going to be a goal line situation after Dan Daniel comes in and eventually makes the tackle. So let's see if we can keep USF out of the end zone. No, as we got a play action looking down the middle of the field. And it's going to be an instant response. Touchdown, USF. And the Bulls will tie this game up right away. They will not mess around and find out. And here's the worst part. Our next possession, we end up going free and out. So they already have a chance to take the lead. And I don't know how that pass isn't intercepted. Eddie Davis, he had a beat on it. That would have definitely been an interception in college football. Raven. But we've gotten some benefits like that too every once in a while. So I can't complain about it too terribly much. You know, game does play different than say like your NCAA 14, right? So that, that's really what we're looking at. But third and long coming up though. As we're late in the first quarter, would love to get this stop. Dropping back, not able to get pressure, and we're going to get him off the field. Forcing that incomplete pass, as that's Willie Mason that was there to break it up. And now they're going to try a 55-yard field goal attempt, which dude actually does have the leg for it. He actually does have the leg. Unfortunately, it was just a tad bit outside. He just missed it a little bit to the right. So our defense does end up holding out, but not only do we go free and out once again, but great return on the opposite side for USF. So they're going to start this next drive in a red zone already. Broken tackles go lower. It's going to make it first and goal. That should have been even a gain. We should have had them in the backfield, but again, bad tackling killing us right now. And now it's first and goal for USF. They choose to pass the football for this first and goal situation. Got a little bit of pressure on him, but it does not matter, though. Another touchdown for the USF Bulls will give them a 14-7 lead to work through. So now we come back out onto the field with our offense. Ever since taking that 7-0 lead, we've given up 14 unanswered points. So let's see if our offense can get back at it. As two tubings and starts with a great run. Couldn't get the block that we were looking for, but still a good run, though. Pick up that first down. You like to see it. Just look like a little bit better blocking for our receivers. That's an effort thing. But first and ten, nonetheless, as Bell drops back the pass. Looks over to the right hand side and nearly throws another interception there as well. Thankfully, Turner that just dropped that one. So at least it's going to be second and long instead of USF going the other way. And we take advantage right off the jump as that will be caught for the first down. And that will bring us to the end of the first quarter. It's been an exciting first quarter of action so far. As we're in a battle against the USF Bulls down 14-7 after one quarter of play. So now we jump into the second quarter of action here as Bell is going to drop back the pass. Looks over the middle of the field. He's got a guy downfield. And oh, safety comes in the last moment to break that one up. I thought we were going to have a massive gain. But instead, it's going to be a third and nine coming up. Going to be looking at Luke McConnell or Jody Gentry to make something shake. Bell looks to dump it off to Trayvon Randolph instead. They leave him all by himself. And he actually does the rest of the work, though. Keeps the chains moving for us. But we will run into yet another third down attempt here. As Bell lines up in the shotgun formation. As Bell drops back. Tries to run for the first down, but gets dropped in the backfield instead. Probably would have been better off jumping off that football. But Rowan Bell was a little bit predetermined on that read, it seemed like. So now USF takes over at the 20-yard line thanks to a touchback from our custom punter, Tommy Wyatt. 
And that will go for a gain of eight as Mark Hunter does pick up the first down. As now, second and two coming up. It's going to be another run up the middle of the field. And it's going to be a first down for the USF Bulls. Again, another run right down the middle of the field. They're getting that ground game going extremely well. As I look to pass again, looking to the right hand side. One broken tackle later. It's nearly another first, first down, but they're going to mark him just into shy, though. And now looking at a third and inches. Going to be a run up the middle of the field. It's an easy first down and then some. Nazir Evans does come in and make the tackle, but it is just well too late, though. And now another first down for USF as they'll try to throw downfield. We'll get over to the left inside. It's got a man, and it's going to be a touchdown after a missed tackle by Dan Daniel. And USF extends their lead even further. Now looking at a 21 to seven lead. And what's worse for us is that yet again, we have yet another free and out on our hands. And this is not our day today. We are just not really bringing the intensity that we need to bring. Almost like they've kind of given up on the season. I don't know, it, it doesn't seem like that completely, but the lack of effort is appalling because tackling is an effort thing. you got to be able to want to bring the guy down. And that's just not necessarily happening. The soul is getting sucked out of us. And I'm not talking about it in a good way. As now, USF drops back. They try to set up the halfback screen. At least we do end up stopping that, though. So at least there's that. It's now second and ten. And I imagine they'll pass the football yet again. They do. As they're going to try to scramble with this quarterback here. He's got a little bit of speed on him. Gentry does come in from behind, but again, another first down that we give up. USF, they got them keys out because they are on a drive right now. Looking at a third and long as they go play action. Looking over the middle of the field, but it's dropped. Guys, Eddie Davis came in and broke that pass up as Montoya is going to have to go back to the sideline. And there's another field goal attempt for the USF Bulls. This time, though, Sinks it right through. How about that? That is a 53-yard field goal. Don't see a lot of college kickers with the ability to make that field goal, but, you know, here we are, barbecue on the titties anyways. As now, 24-7 is going to be your score right now as McConnell is going to move on to the perimeter as Bell drops back the pass, looks over to D'Angelo Bryden, does pick up that first down. That's a good way to start this drive. Could be our last drive that we have. Before we do go into that halftime locker room, really need to score. Got to get this down to a two-possession game. As USF has thoroughly outplayed us right now as we try for a big play down the right-hand side. Looking for Trayvon Randolph, but it is going to be incomplete, though. So now, second and ten coming up as Bell drops back the pass. He's going to look over the middle of the field. Drops a dime to D'Angelo Bryden. And now, getting into that field goal range for Tommy Wyatt. Would love to get a little bit more than just a field goal, though. So I have 132 left to play in this first half as we'll pass yet again. Getting out to D'Angelo Bryden once again. Another first down for the Memphis Tigers. As now, we're going to go into our no huddle right away. 127 left to play now. Still two timeouts. Looking for a big play possibly with Bryden. See if it's available to us. And we're going to actually, we're going to try to go for it. But we do miss the target completely. Now, with second and ten instead. USF, they decide to send the blitz on this second down. We throw over the middle. We find IT Thomas, who gets across the ten-yard line. Really good spot now to get points on the board. We could make this the final possession of the first half. But Bell, on a second and goal, tries to set up the screen, but gets sacked instead. Tough spot for us right now gonna call a timeout that does allow us a chance if we compete this pass of course we can come out here we can at least make this the final offensive play of the first half bell's gonna dump it off to two toofington and toofington is not gonna really find much of anything we are actually going to be uh almost dropped in the backfield it seems like so we're gonna go ahead and try to Get some of his clock ran off. And I'll tell you what, guys. I am disappointed with how we came out in this first half of action. Straight up and down. This was not a good first half for us. 
two game losing streak we had to win this game and yet here we are and just we just haven't been able to accomplish that we have not able to come out with the intensity that we want to come out and play with so going to be down by 14 at the half so then we jump into that second half of action here as we try to do a little bit better on both sides of the football nobody really played particularly well there were some good moments here or there but it's been mostly usf for for that matter so second half just gonna focus on one play at a time because we can't get it all back at once we can't some there's no two touchdown and one play score kind of thing right so bell will drop back the pass though he's gonna look over to the right hand side trying to set up that that bunch pattern like the numbers are there just bell can't put it where it needs to go that that's the frustrating part and he's he's a scrambling quarterback just this game does does a better job of guarding scrambling quarterbacks than maybe what you see out of say uh like ncaa 14 right so we don't end up getting another first down on the drive so we have to punt this football away however we jump to a few minutes later into the quarter as both teams have kind of been training back and forth but four minutes left to play in this first quarter wait a minute there's a fumble now josh Pick it up, baby. Let's go down the sideline. He's got some space to work. Touchdown, Tigers. Let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's exactly what we needed. But was he down, though? I wasn't sure if he was actually down or not. Good to finish the play just in case, but the refs will take a look. They are actually going to reverse the call. So instead, it's going to be a third and 10, and USF, they will proceed to pick up the first down. Dan Daniels, again, blowing a coverage. What is going on with our secondary right now? Like, what are we actually doing? Like, someone let me know, because I, I don't know what we're trying to accomplish. Whatever it is, though, it is simply not it, though. But do at least force them to settle for yet another field goal attempt at the very least. But late in the third quarter, this would make it a free possession game. Time would become the essence, and yet there's that field goal attempt that will successfully be made. So 27 to 10 is now going to be your score, and most of it calling on one singular play. So because of that play reversal, that was a 10-point swing. So that's a tough look for our guys and our offense. It just just having a hard time really getting anything going at the moment again usf continuing to outplay us thoroughly this is what we usually do to other teams like i remember having some like massive massive blowouts back in year number four man those seem like good times a long time ago but not happening here today it is simply not happening here but we do force them to yet another third and long though see if we can get them off the field here real quick and sure enough we actually don't. We give up yet another first down. And that's the killer part. We're giving up third and longs. And we've done this multiple times in this quarter alone. So we finished up the third quarter of action. Can't cut into this deficit at all. So we're already down by 17. And we only have this one singular quarter to make it all up. We'll see if we have a big comeback on our hands. It starts with keeping them out of the end zone now. Third and goal. They tried to run that halfback screen, but the halfback screen is going to go for an incompletion, though. So, fourth and goal, they're going to settle for the field goal here. Kick us up, and they will just sneak it past that left upright. So, now the field goal is not even in the question anymore. Like, we can't take any more field goals. We got to go with touchdowns and touchdowns only if we want to go out here and somehow find a way to win this game. But we're down by 20 points, so as we throw over to the right-hand side, trying to get out to Jody Gentry. He's not helping the cause either. He drops the pass there, too, and that's going to be third and long. Bell's going to drop back the pass here. I mean, we have to at this point. It's third and 11. We do get it out to D'Angelo Bryan, which I don't know how we complete that pass. But maybe we're finally having a little bit of Lady Luck finally coming up on our side because you saw those passing numbers. She hasn't been pretty today. She has not been pretty at all in this one. As Bell will drop back the pass. Got the quarterback contained on. But we still find Jody Gentry for the completion. None of the less. As Bell, he does pick up the first down once more. 
As now, first and 10, once again, Bell drops back the pass, looks over to right inside, and it's going to be deflected away. Now going to be third and long, a first down that we simply must pick up. Bell dropping back the pass. He's looking to the left-hand side. He's going to get the incompletion there. And we're going for this. We got to go for this here. We can't just simply punt the ball away. We got to show some aggression here. Let's hope we can find a way to pick up this first down, though. Fourth and seven. Bell's going to drop back. Does get his. He throws the football, though, in our offensive line. Ultimately, cannot hold up. So, again, our defense comes out onto the field. Could be a big dagger, especially we can't get him off the field on this third and five. And what does Montoya do? Well, all the time in the world, finds a crosser late and somehow managed to find a way to pick up that first down. Albert Miller also having a good performance as well. He knew he has 100 yards on the day. So now it's second and 10 coming up. Throwing over to the right-hand side. Don't know how that pattern was not completed. I mean... Dude was settled in. He just was not ready for the football. So, third and ten. Uh, we'll see if we can at least get a little something going here on the defensive end. Get a sack. Get something for us here. As now, Montoya moves a man to motion. Third and long. We get the sack, though. It's a good thing that we did because he was looking to attack downfield. He really wanted that dagger. But we only have five minutes left in this game. Still down by 20 points. And now we'll go ahead and send a man into motion. Bell's going to look over the middle of the field. We tried to get it out to IT Thomas, but he drops the pass again. Like, Bell has not done himself any favors today, but neither has his receivers either. The receivers have not really helped in this game. I'm actually shocked that was not somehow dropped, right? But Luke McConnell, he does at least make that particular catch there. But we're in five minutes, and we're down by three possessions, so... You already know, we're about to go quick here. Looking for that big play downfield, hopefully. But we'll dump, try to dump it off instead, but we miss on that throw too. You hate to see, and that will be resulting in an incomplete pass. Couple plays later, though. Third and six coming up. Going to try to set up the screen. See if we can pull a little fast one. Bell drops back the pass. Gets it off to two. Toofington. Can he get to the sideline? He can't. USF. They were all over it. We do force a free and out on the next possession, but look how much time's left on the clock. There's just two minutes left in this entire game right now. So, hoping for the best. Trying to at least finish strong, but I have a feeling that we're not going to win this game unless we get a miracle from God. Even then, that might not be enough either. So, running the football, that's completely off the, uh, that's off the board. Uh, we can't just run the football anymore unless we absolutely have to right so bell's going to drop back the pass again already facing pressure but we do have to find d'angelo brighton who does get across that 30 yard line and we're going back to that noah huddle two really good plays in a row let's see if we can make it three completions in a row though as bell finally gets across to uh get ready to snap this ball we're looking over to the left hand side we get out to d'angelo brighton again who does manage to get himself across that 15-yard line. So again, another no huddle coming in for us here as Bell does line up in the shotgun formation. Looking around, trying to throw over the middle of the field. We find Luke McConnell. He can't find his way into the end zone, but will be stopped at about the one-yard line. Looking for a touchdown to end the drive. Bell finds the end zone, and that is going to be a touchdown for the Memphis Tigers. Could it be too little too late? Probably, but it does at least feel a little good that we can come out here and at least get a touchdown there. But we do miss out on the onside kick. So if we don't get a stop on third down, which of course we don't, of course we don't get that third down, we are actually going to probably not get the football back. There's less than 40 seconds left. We don't have any timeouts. They're trying to run the score up on us because they are not in that victory formation. That's crazy to me. We will at least keep them out of the end zone, though. We at least allow them to do that. But very last play of the game. They don't need to snap this ball. They choose to snap it anyways and get another few points on the board. Like, 
Are you joking? Like, you don't even need to do that. Just, like, clock the game. Just let me go home and get into that field position because we drop a g another game. We dropped another game. We actually drop, no, our third game in a row. Free game losing streak. And this one, this might be the worst of the free games because USF, they did not win a single conference game going in. And they looked a lot better than what they've been playing this entire season running up against us. So, tough look. So once again, we find ourselves on the losing end as we drop yet another game. Rowley Bell ends up going 23 for 49. And guys, we cannot throw 50 plus passes. It's just something that simply cannot happen. But it did, and we end up losing. He did end up with 289 yards and a touchdown, though. As for the running game, that was pretty much non-existent as Tuve Tuvington was our leading carrier with 35 yards. However, Rowley Bell did find the end zone on the ground. Receiving wise, D'Angelo Bryden did have a nice breakout performance with 9 catches and 159 yards. However, it was Tuve Tuvington that caught our only touchdown pass. That was through the air. He had 4 catches for 35 yards. And with the struggles that we have been having on the offensive side of the football, defense really needs to step up, and they just have not been doing that. Willie Mason was a bright spot for us in this game. He had five tackles, and that did lead the team in solo tackles in this game. Eddie Coolbeans, Tony Marquot, and Dan Daniel did also manage to get four solo tackles in this game as well. Not to mention, we did get to the quarterback a couple of times today, mostly in the fourth quarter when it almost didn't matter. Uh, Chris Gentry and Eddie Coolbeans got sacks in this game, and we didn't force any turnovers, so... We're really struggling out here as we drop our third consecutive game in a row. We are really in a free fall right now, you guys. But if there is a silver lining in this game, though, we do at least get that four-star running back, which will be really helpful for the future because he could really bring some explosiveness to our offense. And from what we've seen for the past few games, well, our team desperately needs that. Uh, we need something to shake here. But guys, if that last game wasn't a must win, then I feel like this one definitely has to be. Like, forget repeating as conference champions. That's kind of out of the window for us. We're just trying to make a bowl game at this point. Like, we are three losses away from not even being bowl eligible, and we had much higher expectations than that. So, hopefully we can finally get back on a winning streak, and next episode, we'll take on a team that's in our conference and does have a similar record than us they're also free and four we'll leave the Tulane Greenway for next episode but even though this is not how I planned on this game going I hope you guys still enjoyed it if you did make sure you go ahead smack that like button for me hit that subscribe button if you do happen to be brand new to the channel this is John Jay Gaming on the mic signing off hoping you guys are all out there having a good one take care everybody